Hello there YouTube, it is Musical Area. It's been quite a while since I have uh, done a stream. That's because I had both parents visit me on my birthday and they kept on staying for another week. And then Dad went home and Mum stayed for another four days. <laughs> I finally uh, dropped them off at the airport this afternoon and today is the first day I've had uh, where I'm free to do things like this. Anyhow, today we're going to drive that train that's over there. So I just uh, pulled up here. We're going to need to push it out of its current uh, position. We're going to back it into this position to refuel it. Down there is a uh, train wash, which will take it through. And uh, once we've taken it through the train wash, we'll uh, position it on the track right next to the one it's on now. On the other side. And uh, then we'll just need to wait a couple of minutes before we uh, get a green signal to proceed. So we're sitting on this track waiting to move out. Let's head up our train. I do believe the locomotive has overnighted in its current location. And uh, the sun is rising. Or has arisen really. With that said, it's likely that the uh, locomotive is not powered currently. So we'll need to start the engine before we move on out. Bit of long uh, trek up all of our carriages. These locos are quite high up to get into and I uh, just need to jump up the ladder. So we'll open the door and head on up. Close it up. Deadly quiet in here. A couple of things we need to do on the driver's seat is turn on our control systems. Open this up. Battery is on. Don't think we need any of that stuff. Radio is in, just in case we do. Uh, marker lights are off. Front number is good to go. Over here we have the start switch in start and the idle switch to low. Just checking that we're clear. No one banging around there. Cool. Let's start her up. Okay. Careful checks to look at. We've got the uh, cutoff valve in. Automatic brake is released. A little bit of independent brake to just hold us here at the moment. Uh, the reverser is in and forward. We have some lights on. These are ready to go. Make some loud noise because we're going to move that train a little bit far forward into the next track. We need to clear that track. So we're going to go all the way almost to the, the signal. Contact the signaler. Let them know we're moving. Release the brakes. 
and on we go. She pulls away nicely. Doing seven mile an hour, we can probably do about ten. And we'll coast it through an idle now. The brakes on these particular locomotives and the entire train are a little bit weird. You go into suppression, which will actually add pressure to the brakes. But when you go into lap or holding mode, basically you just keep what's there until you release the brakes, and when you release the brakes, that's obvious. It's a little bit like add some pressure to slow down a little bit, add more pressure to slow down a lot, keep on adding pressure until it stops, or release it. You can't really reduce the amount of braking at any given time. So we're now going to come to a slow and releasing it again at 5 miles an hour. And I think we will have cleared it by now. Go into service. And we'll hold it there at the lap. We will be reversing the train so we'll go into handle off cut ourselves out, turn off controls from there, neutral, jump up, uh, turn off the big light and turn the marker lights on which gives us the red lights, and jump down. Looking at the front we see the red lights are in, so it's time to head on back to the other side of the train. Now this bit is a little bit mind-blowing to those of you that don't know much about these uh, American trains but in the back carriage there is a driving compartment for this train. It's a little bit weird. And in the driving compartment it's a little bit like having a uh, like those freight locomotives when you have two of them connected together. Except the locomotive at the back isn't a locomotive it's just controlling the thing we've just left behind us. So the locomotive will push the train from behind as we come up here. Let's jump on board. Now because of the way this scenario is set up there are a few uh, people on board which is a little bit weird but we'll go up and get my cab ready. I just wanted to have this light switch on, done, close and lock that, this is what they call a gallery car, you can see this uh, big gallery with like baggage racks on top and a gap under there, apparently the idea was when you're sitting here in your seat on the top level somebody can be sitting directly underneath you but the uh, person that collects tickets can stick his hand through this gap here and uh, collect your ticket without having to come up stairs welcome to the driving compartment of this carriage I'm going to cut in the brakes first and release them Partly release them. Stick the power in, connect the power, get some lights on, crossing and the. Oh, we don't need the marker on. Gauge lights. There we go. Cool. Here we go. It's going to move forward slightly, but we do need to change the points on the next crossing. I'm just slightly driving forward. Go. 
Come to a stop in a couple of seconds. There we go. Oh, Patrick. And who is that on Restream? Quartz1, your local route. That's very good. Uh, I've gone into neutral since we don't want to move the train for the moment. Gonna come up the back. We'll pretend those people aren't there because they shouldn't be. It's just the way the scenario was set up. Yes, it's a push pull configuration. Now, push pull configuration isn't something I'm very familiar with in Australia. There might be somewhere in Australia that uses that kind of thing, but certainly not the place that I've ever been to. Let's close that door. Let's head up the stairs. Ignoring this random folk that are in here. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could have made this scenario without them, but there we are. Is it possible to control trains with a flight control? Not really. <laughs> I can't imagine how you do that. I guess you could use the throttles. Yeah. But they're kind of not a continuous motion, are they? They're like click, click, click. I guess an Airbus is as well, but you know. Alright, we've got 20 minutes to do our operation, which includes refueling the loco, um, washing the entire train, and then putting it onto the siding ready to move out. I think we're better to do it in 20. In fact, I reckon we can do it in about 10. How fast are we moving? 14. It's going to break a little bit. Release it there. Yeah, I'm just uh, using the keyboard for this. We do need to move back a little bit more as we watch one of the other trains uh, head on past. And hello to Cloudy Maker. Hope you're well. That's perfectly fine there. We'll let that go into neutral. And we'll head back to the back of the train. We have this little uh, walkway to go all the way down our train here. And this big building where we started the day at. Yeah, weather in Sydney is awful. Weather in Melbourne has been warm and mostly sunny with a few scattered showers here and there. So we haven't had any, any major issues yet. Yet. I do believe uh, Friday night we might get some rain then across the weekend. Right, let's open this up. Caps ready to go on. And we'll start that refueling. Hello Rossi. Hope you're all good. It's been a while since I did a nice stream, so kind of glad to get back into it. Alright, we can uh, 
finish the feeling. Done. Cap is closed. And we've got enough fuel to go all the way up the line to San Francisco. Uh, we're kind of near San Jose at the moment, San Jose de Ridon. Uh, the next station in the direction we're walking is the uh, San Jose Airport. And then uh, I think the third last on this line is San Francisco Airport. So it could be a nice interesting idea to, you know, run between the two different airports. So then we'll uh, reboard our train. We're uh, there. We go. Those noisy doors again. Door. Ready to go. <laughs> So jumping back in, we take this train through the train wash. Should be fun. Okay, coming through the train wash, we do want to be about five miles an hour, so it gets a good clean. So slow it down ever so slightly. That's six at the moment. That's five. Let's open the brakes. That's four. A little bit of a push from the back. Keep the thing moving. Oh, I keep getting called by parents and stuff. It's uh, I dropped my mum off at the airport at about seven. She's just boarded, so. She called me to tell me to call dad and then good dad called me to tell, yeah, whatever. Funny. But at least I'm free of the parents. Which is why I'm here streaming now. Probably should have waited for another day so they wouldn't keep on calling me. And I'm sure I'll get another call at about 9 o'clock when they land. <laughs> They're heading up to Sydney. With any luck, their plane makes it all the way to Sydney and doesn't end up stopping in Canberra or something crazy. Been there, done that before. There we go. Washing the train. In the cabin, we do need to look at this red light coming up. Uh, we need to stop before that, because if we cross it, we are spatting. You don't want to spat. Also, this section of line rolls downhill slightly, so when we do put the brakes on, we really, really need to put the brakes on. And before we start moving in the other direction, we need to add a little bit of power before we take all the brakes off. Nice and slow. We've got 10 minutes before we need to move out. <laughs> Good old menu log. I'm going back to uh, work in the office soon. Uh, next week, in fact. I'll get one more uh, Milk Run Monday in because they want to sell on Tuesday, not Monday. 
is my only saving grace in that one. And I'm working the uh, kind of early shift next week, so I get to do um, Milk Run Monday on Monday. That's come to a complete stop. Handle going off. Valve cut out. Drop those. Need the marker light on. Crossing light off. Cool. Heading up. I think we need to move up to the front of the train and then swap a uh, what you call those things points. Trudging over the uh, very rocky ground here. Some wonderful uh, vegetation over here. Very unusual species of grass known as weeds. I think the usual thing to do with these is take a whippersnipper to them. Just need to check where we're going. Do we need to move down one? I don't think we do. So we're using that one and leaving the other ones as they are. Yep, we need to go straight ahead on that point instead of through the thing. So we bring this over, push that to the right. That's correct. Safer to uh, jump on board on the other side, so I'll do that. Way up the big ladder. Swap our lights around, so we want to take the marker lights out, put the front numbers on, everything else is good to go. Hello there, Infinite Flight, hope you're well. Uh, just going to put on our internal lights, chuck in the reverser, turn all these three things on, uh, cut in the brakes. Independent brake up to 55. Release the train brake, hold the brake on the Indy. We're ready to go forward, or we'll move it slightly forward. Brakes coming off. And we're moving. I do wonder what going back to the office will be like. I haven't been in an office since uh, I think it was March or April last year. That's got to be late April. Might have even been early May. Actually, that was to the other office in the other job that I had before I took on this role. So. I haven't been to the office I'll be in on Tuesday since 2020. Another one of those better trains. One of those ones. We've just got the old silver. These ones have the weird brakes, so they're hilarious. Hello Ellie, Sanders, very good to see you. I hope you're well. We don't get to chat enough. I've gone to the wrong track. Let's stop, 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 stop. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Dang it. Back to neutral, we need to figure out where we went wrong. 
Oh, we went that wrong, did we? We went that wrong. We should have actually been on the other track back there. Didn't realise. All right, we'll have to drive the train backwards. Get a handle off. Cut that out. We're going back again. <laughs> Good old twenty twenty vision. Yeah, yeah. That's alright, we're still going strong with the old 2020. Uh, I think 2021 was just a repeat of 2020. And 2022 is shaping up to be World War Three. So, going well. Brilliant. Almost as brilliant as driving this train onto the wrong track. Like I just did. <laughs> I've got five minutes to get that fixed up. Hopefully we can do that in time. We actually probably need to... Start going a bit quickie. Uh, New Zealand's had 22,000 cases of the COVID and Australia's stopped counting because hundreds of thousands. <laughs> hundreds of thousands. Let's release the brake. Chuck that in. And run forward. We have to repeat that last move again and actually take the correct track this time. Yeah, that's another thing. It'd be nice to live through one historical event at a time. If any of you guys know Pilot Blog, who's a like airline blogger, he often takes his GoPro, straps it to his head in his 737. Yeah, he lived in uh, Ukraine, lives in Ukraine, is currently in Ukraine. Um, up until the day before Ukraine happened, he was an airline pilot. And now he's an airline pilot for an airline that doesn't really exist anymore. Grand. Need to come right up to the edge. That's the edge there. Done. Gonna handle off. Neutral. Take them out. I'll be back again. This time we'll go down the correct track. to walk a little quicker this time because we're actually actually running short of time got two minutes now to open this track up done that's more like it Pop that in, one, two, three, get the lights in. Cut the brakes in. Bit of independent. Brakes are subsided, let's give it some juice. Bail off the brakes. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a few bizarre opinions out there, and I've probably heard a few of them in my own house over the last week or two. Had the parents in. But fortunately, my parents are now on an aeroplane 
flying back to Sydney, leaving me in peace. Yeah, they've had a few... Uh, let's just say that the uh, Russians thought they'd be just walking into the Ukraine quite easily. Not quite unopposed, but you know, not competently opposed. And uh, it seems that they have been. They have been rather competently opposed. Now, I do realise it's a massive superpower versus a rather small country, but you know. <laughs> yeah. R.I.P. my sanity. All right, we've uh, since we were late getting onto this track, we can continue straight ahead without any stopping. That's where the train was when we started this game, right there on that track right next to us. It's taken a good twenty minutes to get over to this side. <laughs> so we have um, spent twenty minutes getting from there to here, a distance of about eight feet. But we've got a full tank of fuel and we've got a clean train. So I guess it's all worth it. I believe this is a 15 zone, we're going 12, so we're all good to go through the points. And I see green light up ahead, so I'll just continue moving. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Let's drop back back to idle. Indeed, yeah, it's one of those things where it's not the equipment that seems to be making the difference. It seems to be the fact that the Russians, you know, are just getting paid to do their job, and the Ukrainians are fighting for their existence essentially. Certainly gives you a, a sense of determination. Pushing up to 20, or is it 25? Can't remember. We'll go to 20. The one good thing about these kind of trains is when you're up the other end of the train driving it, it's quite, it's rather quiet up there. You don't have the engine. Like you do up here. Just checking our signals. We have a yellow. Straight ahead. Nice little um, bridge there. Looks like that bridge used to be a level crossing, but then they dug under it. Okay, time to lap the brake a little bit. Not too much. Open it up again. These brakes are so weird to use, but you know, a bit of a challenge. Unlock doors. We get ready to move to the other end of the train where we're driving this thing from. Panels off. Loudly. <laughs> Let's turn off some of these lights. That's out. That's off, off, off. 
out. Lock the doors. So far, oh, we'll see how we go. Continuing back to the free roam. And I believe we need to go to the other side of the train to spawn that scenario. Uh, front marker lights, yep, those are the red lights. All the rest of that stays on. Correct. Yeah, we're secure up here. Off we go. Uh, the time was about 13 or 14, so we might need to step up a bit. <laughs> Contact Norcal approach. Yeah, that's right. Actually, we're heading in past uh, San Jose first. Done. last time I did this scenario and I had to walk back to the other end of the train to start this scenario that we've just ended. It was a bit weird. Hope it works. We've got to be only like two or three minutes away from uh, from the time. This is your favourite route? Ah, that didn't work. Dang it. I'm sure we could see a clock, even when you're not in a scenario. Because this scenario starts at 17 minutes past. Need to open and close the doors. Thanks for that. Yep, we'll get that sorted. Yeah, we're puffed out from running to both sides of the train. I'm certainly not in the thing, am I? No. My open or closed? I'm closed. All right. <laughs> yes, yes, insecure cap. Yeah, open. There we go. Services started. Yay! It finally worked. <laughs> are we open already? I believe we are. Yes, we're open. Open for business. I do wonder how uncomfortable those stairs are to come up. Especially as a rather large human being that I am. Uh, they don't look particularly comfortable. And mostly due to this silly gallery design. Which I s think is insane and stupid. Anyway. <laughs> that's the gallery design. Let's go down and have a look at it. Uh, maybe on the other side. Because this is like the baggage area. But on the other side is, you know, 
If you're a ticket collector, you can shove a ticket up, <laughs> up through the gap here. Ticket, please. Yeah, I'm looking straight up your pants. Nice. Don't wear a skirt and sit up there, because I can see your undies. That's why you're down here like normal people. <laughs> Sick, laddie. That goes all the baggage area down here. Yo, how you doing? Do I know the logic behind it? Yeah, I heard that there was a union thing where they only wanted... Um, I think they only got one... Um, what was it? ticket collector per train and they didn't want them having to walk through the train carriage then go up some stairs and go back again <laughs> I want some more one direction through the train each time I came to a stop so yeah that's how I ended up with that here in normal land in Australia we pay for our ticket to get onto the station which is then secured and yeah, we have ticket inspectors, but they don't necessarily check everyone. And often they come in groups of twos or threes, or fours, or gangs of six that pick on school children for not having their bus pass. <laughs> Seen that plenty of times. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. 45 minutes. Yeah, okay. Cool. Don't know how long it takes our ticket inspectors, but our ticket inspectors don't even check every train. So, yeah. And our guys, uh, as I said, getting up in groups of threes. I think this is one of these scenarios where we have to start with the doors closed, so we'll go ahead and close the doors now. And get ready to drive forward. Cut off valves in. Just run the lap. Pop that in. Down here we want uh, marker light off. Gauge lights on, crossing light on, cab light off, headlights on. I do believe we are ready to move. I wish there was some way to hit that button with a keyboard press. Maybe you know the keyboard press for manual crossing light to do that which gives you that thing because I've not found the keyboard press for that and you have to press it down there which when you're traveling coming into a stop no <laughs> no don't do that All right, we're about to move out to the San Francisco line. Next station is San Jose Airport. Try J. No, <laughs> that was a crossing light, oddly. Brakes are released. Let's go.
this one always gets me you'll all you'll end up with a whole bunch of red lights but the very top one should be flashing and uh, that means you're going to be crossed over to another track apparently why they make it a flashing red light to go doesn't make sense to me but yep the top one is indeed flashing which means they are on limited speed and will be uh, crossing over to the right hand track thanks to our uh, person that's reading out on the, uh, <laughs> the uh, what they call that thing the PA system there you go. thank you Emily straight through we'll make a third pass of that very same building that we started this as a, this day at <laughs> okay we're going 15 we're about to cross into a 40 zone Let's accelerate. Up we go. There goes that building. That's where we refueled, right there. There's the truck that we left. Right up on the 40 limit now. There's that siding that we're at. And we're now further north than we have been in this entire scenario. Off we go. Simov, indeed. We can essentially go 80 miles an hour for now, but we do need to stop at a mile. Takes about half a mile to stop, roughly, give or take. Now I'm sure I'm going to get a phone call from a parent in about 45 minutes. Just be aware of that. Gonna lap it there, see how it goes. Stopping well. Coast in a little. Mm. 
I'm not sure if that counts as a level crossing, it's just like a pedestrian thing. I don't know why, but Americans really hate bridges over railways for some reason. They just don't do them. Yeah, that's about right. See what the back of the train looks like? It looks fine. Good. There goes the other dude. This, that's the uh, San Jose Airfield Tower right there. Sometimes you hear a plane go overhead. Sometimes. Clearly not this time. But yeah, that's uh, San Jose Airfield. Let's close the doors. That's all right. I'm hoping we'll see you again later. This ride takes more than an hour, I suspect, so catch it in. Bye-bye, San Jose. Straight ahead we go. Yep, we can accelerate to full. That's an aircraft. Thirty five. And we can get up all the way to just about eighty miles an hour. Three miles to the stop. Wonder the next where the next FNO is. I think it was um, silly Halifax again. if it'll be really bad weather again. Probably. It is Halifax. I think I'll do Melbourne to Sydney for next milk run. Well, maybe Sydney to Melbourne. I don't know. Sydney to Melbourne you get all the weird kind of freight flights. So you get to fly 747s or 777s and stuff. It seems more interesting than like A320s and 737s. That was a crossing, it wasn't. We'll coast in for last mile.
thought I'd release the brakes, but I hadn't. <laughs> Looking for our stopping place. Pretty much got the sign there. I love how secure that looks. Just um, isn't. <laughs> Where do you even buy your ticket? Who knows? Guessing up here. Oh, there we go. There's tickets. But if you're late to the train and you wanted to run from this car straight into the train, you're not going to get a ticket, eh? <laughs> Good luck. Doors closing, off we go. Sunnyvale is the next stop. Cute name. You can really feel that this uh, this line is very industrial, very freight line. Even though you know, obviously we're a passenger train, we do have a you know big diesel locomotive pushing us from behind. It's not very metro, is it? Diesels instead of electric power. This feels a little bit industrial and a little bit brutal. little yellow signs and white signs with a big S on them. I thought they might have been something to do with whistling because of a level crossing, but apparently not. Haven't seen a level crossing yet. Okay, the next station is pretty close to in sight. A little bit of light braking to get speed under control. That's a level crossing. That's a jet flying overhead.
the delayed response on these brakes is a little bit difficult. I love how there's literally no fence there at all. So. Where's the car park? Don't know. Must be at the other end. Oh yeah, there's a bit of a fence, but not where you'd expect a fence. I would expect a fence here. See, that's a crossing. You can just cross over there and hang around in the grass. Ready for the train. Funny. Off we go. like that beeping noise, it's kind of cute. What this game needs is something a little bit like um, FSUIPC, where you go, I would like that to be assigned to this key. Next station is Mountain View. Got a level, level, level crossing. They're taking level crossings out of Melbourne. Uh, my closest level crossing um, is due for removal at some time around June or July this year. They've been doing a lot of preparation work. Uh, I think they're building a new station platform. They're actually raising the level of all the tracks. So they've got to put a new station on top of the old one, then they're going to de demolish the old one. So the trains will be on a bridge, or in a tunnel, I can't remember if the bridge is for the road or for the railway, but it's one or the other. Essentially it'll be like that or whatever, instead of having level crossings everywhere. Little braking, that's to slow us down to a manageable speed. Station is in sight. That's a train like ours coming across. Spot 8 Yeah, that's not half bad Back of the train's quite happy Mountain View
Making up some good time. Let's get ready to go. And a good shot from behind. We're moving. I believe that's a level crossing up ahead. And I believe that's the American way. Long, long, short, long, and hold it until you cross. So yeah, it's quite a big week this week. Um, back to the office next week. It should be interesting. Not sure I'm looking forward to it. We'll see how we go. First time in the office with this team on this role. There we go. that one. Good three miles to go. And our first advertising billboard of the trip. Oh, I think the second one. That's a pedestrian underpass. And a station that we don't stop at. Interesting. We're actually going too fast. Let's slow that up a little. Not hearing my bell, strangely. Time to slow on down. Fifty, forty, thirty-nine. Just gonna break out the brake a little.
And here we are. Not a bad little station. Not sure about that uh, pedestrian crossing here, but... Uh, <laughs> With that, let's move on. Let's wait until the correct time to move on. Made some good time in that one. We go. A lot of people taking that corner there. Something about the rail without any um, electrification that just doesn't feel like you're in a city anymore. It feels like, you know, this is a freight rail company that just decided to stick some passenger trains on for the heck of it. I know that's not what CalRail is, but still, it feels a bit primitive. Maybe the Americans like it that way. This is the kind of train that you might find out in country New South Wales. More to the point like country Victoria we have the N-class um, diesel locomotives but they tend to run around to the front of the train they don't have a carriage driving unit like this. an actual station or I don't see any people on it yeah it looks like a real station obviously we're not stopping but there's a few stations here that look a little bit abandoned like they haven't been used in a while like this thing coming up right now No, that's real. Don't know why we don't stop there. It looks like a nice little town with a big uh, shopping centre. Slow it down. Now this is a weird station without any fence between the road and the station platform. Is that for real? You just wander on to the train?
Can you imagine a train station like this in, well, anywhere? <laughs> Kind of like, hi, I'm at the shop. I'll just cross the road and walk straight into here. <laughs> Done. That's hilarious. I love it. I actually hate it, but you know. Crazy stuff. Let's jump in. Don't know if the Americans have to do the same signal for that kind of situation, but in Melbourne we just go bow and go. Things are getting more densely packed as we drive through. That's a lot of level crossings. If you're from Melbourne, it reminds me of uh, the Upfield line before it got de-leveled. Level crossing every five meters, almost. <laughs> Another one of these bizarre little Assuming that's a station of some description TSW2 Insight, how are you? Hope you're well Yeah, I'm normally a flight sim streamer, not a train one, but, you know, trains are fun as well. I come from Australia, Victoria, Melbourne. So I'm not used to these Americano trains. I did live in Sydney before this, and uh, they had double-decker silver trains when I was living there. Electric ones, though. Not these diesel things. That was a lot of crossings. Time, one minute out. Not bad. Yeah, I need to blow that pretty quick. Oh, 
Yeah, I got it. But I needed the emergency brake to get it, so... Yeah. as a school bus drives past <laughs> those are off yeah what about these Why are we not moving? PCS is open. Uh, that'll be it. How do we get that off? I love that um, graffiti look there. That was good. The zones are getting more densely packed together. Lots of houses. Looks a little hipster around this area. It's San Carlos. Still a little bit of um, industrial stuff going on though. This is a railway yard after all. Ooh, we're going up. Becoming a sky rail. Still getting used to this whole lap brake thing. It's very uh, different from your standard brakes that I'm used to on these uh, games. Those two are pretty close. I think that's an empty. Didn't stop.
So that, there we go. I do like this uh, station design. That's kind of cute. <laughs> That's right. The Western Australians are still worried about, you know, actually catching COVID. Because I think here in Melbourne, we've gotten to the point it's like, eh, whatever. As long as you're, you know, vaccinated and boosted, we're all good. Catch it. Then you might get to stay home from work for a week. If you're lucky. Uh, we stayed at that station for too long. Let's go. I do like that. That's a rather low looking bridge to me. Is that one of these things that trucks can't get under? I wonder. <laughs> it seems a little bit, you know, a low uh, clearance right there. I had best call dad, he should be in position. Hey there, just hoping that you're in position for your pickup. Good day. Uh, well, they've landed, so it shouldn't be too long. Yep. Go, cool. catch it. Thank you. speed are we doing? 30? Okay, let's uh, stop at this station. Left hand platform today. Nice. You did. That's fun. <laughs> okay, passengers are open. I do like the reflection on that metal train. What's good? So Patrick, did you hear the ear side of the conversation as well, or just my side? raised portion with the train on top of the raised part that's pretty um, metropolitan of it I do like these massive suburbs with houses as far as I can see fences I don't know why a message didn't pop up 
Who knows? Maybe it broke. Hey there, Matthew. Been a while since I was able to uh, stream anything. Hillsdale coming up. that distance I think we're good to release a little on the lap brakes those are interesting stops Can't stop for long, time to go. Such a quiet train up the front here because the engine's all the way at the back. Also, as the engine starts pushing, you don't actually move for a couple of seconds. It's like, are we going? Yes, yes we are going. Cool. Looks like uh, the parents have arrived in Sydney. Story is that they arrived at Sydney Airport, but the uh, plane was too far forward on the gate, so they needed to push back to get back in line with the Aerobridge. Great. <laughs> Accidentally went to the emergency brake for a bit there. And we're 
all good now. Do that thing again. Released, released. All the way out. Release it. some power. Okay, that's released, that's in, that's released, sand is off. Now I think it's because we just tap the, um, the emergency brake, it's gone into a shutdown mode of some description. There's the B, bell switch is a Light, it should be released. We're in forward mode. Reset, reset, reset. Go, go, go. That's in, that's off. else that I'm missing really dynamics are off service brakes working normal released forward on, on, and on. Four. Normally it starts moving. Just trying to think about what that might be the case of movingness. Movingness is a thing that we want. What's that thing? It's nothing. I'm at full power. But I'm at idle power at the back. Interesting. Okay. Um.
Gonna let the brake there. Do we need to go to the back of the train? Gonna open doors, just gonna check the other doors. Ah, other doors have got opened. Fun. So by closing one set of doors, we open the other set of doors. That'll work now. There it goes. Ah, we open one set while we close the other set. That was interesting. We're only about 20 minutes behind now. All good. I'm sure we'll be able to catch up. Easy. We only need to be at the next station after the station next. We're two sessions behind. Grand fun. Let's go. So I need to be there at 19 minutes past. It's 22 past. So I just need to be there three minutes before now. go as fast as we can. Wish they had some kind of indication of doors open and shut. rolling faster. I think we'll get up to 700. Do some harder stops. A little far forward, but the door's in the right place. Just going to go pretty much full power all the way. Unfortunately, the uh, stations get closer together now, so you don't even get to accelerate to full speed.
Cool. So, five minutes late. Again, no fence between the railway and the, the street. I think it's S for switch and it's X for crossing. One looks like a bridge. Wave at the colleague. Swish straight through this. Didn't see that one coming. I think the train got slapped in the face with that branch there. That is one bizarre looking platform. Yeah, when I see the back of this platform, it's ridiculous. That's hilarious, look at it. It was all the way to back there. <laughs> it's like two platforms in one. Does that go underground? I 
I don't know, but that sounds like um, San Francisco airfield. Some planes going overhead. Is that a metro? Might be. Underground metro. Even better. The small street, that one. Fifty. I say that looks like a metro of some description, it looks like it has a third rail. Keep it rolling a little. There's our spot. I've only made up like half a minute. This station looks rather impressive, I like it. A bit high up there. Need to go two miles in negative one minute. Crossing ahead.
South San Francisco is the next station. We're getting there. Freight rail. That always looks a little disconcerting when you're coming up on a train coming the other direction so fast. Turning towards it. <laughs> ah, we need to slow down really big. Missed us that one. Yeah, let's back up a little. Or not, let's just dump them off here. Fine. Oh, you don't have any doors open. No. Let's recycle the brakes, is it? Yes it is. Recycling of the brakes. How many tracks are there here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I feel that's a little excessive.
70 zone coming up. That's quite cute. Good old San Francisco Bay. And we've got a 50 zone coming up. <laughs> Let's slow up for that. Got a flashing yellow. Time to slow it down. Yeah, those lap brakes are a bit of a mystery. <laughs> Look at that. Ever felt inadequate? Good old express train running past us. Ah, we spatted. Great. Let's recheck that one. <laughs> We're so late that the train behind us ended up in front of us. Oh, great.
says to load passengers. Don't have a green light yet. Ours is the middle one. All right. And it's yellow. Long tunnel. Yellow flashing. I've lost the ability to be on time because to be on time I need to be in front of the train that's in front of us Yellow green. The fact that it's cleared out from red yellow to yellow green, I have a funny feeling that he's off the track that we're on. He must have gone over that way.
Or maybe it just didn't stop at the next station. That's, that's likely. Red, yellow. Good oh. Yeah, gotta love these kind of like underneath the motorway kind of stations. We've got like one like this in Melbourne as well, called Macaulay. Climate slow down. There we are, twenty five. Those lights are for the other direction. Slowing down for a 10. San Francisco skyline right there. Is that just straight red? I'd have to be on the line, I think. Yeah, that's that line. That's a flashing red, it is. Cool. Just like that very first signal we saw at the beginning of this whole thing. Flashing red means just proceed slowly. Again, straight ahead. And all the way to the end of the platform.
seven mile an hour. Nice and slow. And we open it up. Time to uh, shut down the handle is off, 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 off. Down here you want the gauge lights off, crossing light off and the marker light on. think that finishes the scenario. Hi there Alex, hope you're well. And that pretty much finishes that train ride. Who's leaving? These guys? Someone's leaving. That's where the ones next to us the other side. Anyway, welcome to San Francisco. Not a bad little journey that one. We did muck it up by getting our doors stuck open, getting stuck at a station. It cost us five minutes and then that other train took us over which cost us another five minutes. So uh, yeah, sorry for the late running train. Nevertheless, that's uh, the Peninsula route, Peninsula Corridor. Hope you enjoyed it. I think uh, if we do the Peninsula Corridor, we'll probably go in the other direction using one of those trains, the green ones. Yeah, they're a little bit easier to use. They don't have those crazy uh, lap break things going on. The train that we just vacated, the late one, I think it's got another driver. That quick, might be pulling out soon. I think we'll go and uh, have a preview of this kind of train, just to see what it's like up in the uh, driver's area. Actually, we'll walk through the train, why not? So here's a very nice, uh, this kind of carriage. This reminds me of the Sydney trains quite a lot. Uh, there's no silly gallery thing going on there. And you get this kind of like in-between landing area. Yeah, it's not too bad. A little bit close to a million train or a Tangara. Obviously it's a little bit more... Uh, country than your average Sydney call it city rail train. He's just pulled in.
That's reasonable. Come up here. Let's go up. It's kind of a better looking locomotive at the front here, in my opinion. Don't think we'll drive this one. We could have driven that one, but no. Nah. <laughs> it's a bit much for one day. But yeah, we can look forward to driving this at some point. I oh, don't know when. Maybe this month, maybe next month. Walk through this one. Of course, on the Sydney trains, you don't board from the bottom, you board from the middle, up on an actual platform. Yeah, as you can probably tell, these are a lot nicer than those, the one that we just drove, in my opinion. a bit of a run. We'll take a look at the you know driver's cab from this end as well. So yeah. That's what this thing looks like, and you've got these funky little fuel pump indicator, generator field, and engine run there. There's a cab setup key that you can open up. Reverser, as you can remove. Engine running key. and pumping the horn gives you the flashing lights out the front. So yeah, I think we'll uh, drive this style of loco or train uh, next time I uh, take to this particular route. It's a much nicer train, let's put it that way, <laughs> in my opinion. Would it be fun to sit on these seats? while the driver's in there. That would be great. I want to pretend you're the driver from up here. Anyway, we've spent uh, five minutes looking at the trains that we want to drive next time. Till then though, I think we've got a Milk Run Monday that I'll be at and maybe a FNO at some point on the weekend. Till then, I have been Musical Labour. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.